as institutions, we can only adapt slowly, but uh, some charts and some papers, those are the ones I would like to present you for. So, uh, this was a place we were at, the uh, uh, European University Institute was willing to host us, and we had a nice two days. So, what I'm talking about is uh, first PA as a field. <laughs> what is it? What is it about? Um, what is the relation to petitioners? Um, how do we educate people to take up positions in public administration? Uh, how are field is used? Um, in research processes, how could we change some of our approaches to be more adaptive vis-a-vis -vis practice? And uh, what are the chances then for public administration as a field? So big there are uh, PA, that's public administration uh, at the universities. And what are the chances uh, for them? So that's roughly what I'll go through with you. So, first of all, you can say about uh, PA as a field that the discussion led to that that's quite some confusion. And yesterday I think we had some discussions also about tuning that in themselves show that uh, it's no easy task to define PA as a field. So, one uh, understanding is that the public administration as a field, that's the discussion of high modernity. PA has been the helper if you take uh, the 20th century all through, you will see how PA has had a strong role in developing society, and increasingly so. So if it were around 1900, more or less a regulating unit, in, in the end, it was a, an action unit. So public administration has taken a very strong action turn, and hence, uh, it has been through a number of changes and challenges because the history of being a regulator is still there. So the passive kind of public administration lives side by side with a very active public administration. And that in itself, of course, creates some challenges and tensions within the field. But still, you can say that what it is now, it is a strong helper in making high modernity work. Still, today, if uh, PA is very much involved in society, still you can say that it's working in the, what you call the shadow of uh, hierarchy. And now I'm going to show you a um, little bit of the discussion and uh, the technique. Is, it's not quite ready for it, but let's see what happens in any other two. So it's the first step towards conceptualizing a new way of organizing our society. New, new roles of uh, different uh, actors and new relations between them in performing those roles. But we really don't grasp it conceptually, do we? Yeah, there are beginnings in the work of, of Dan Sire, for instance, about collaboration or the role of the state in the world of government, or the work of Sharp defining the shadow of hierarchy as majority decisions in parliament or executive intervention or court rulings. Or the important role in the co-production of the action of public and private actors. So um, there are concepts, there are thinkers that do this, that uh, thinkers that operate uh, with what is happening around us, and this shadow hierarchy is one version of thinking theoretically about what is it we are about. So yes. PA is operating more or freely as an agent in society, but still there is a hierarchy behind it which can operate whenever necessary. It's not discussing when it to PA as a generic theory, uh, organizational theory. So uh, PA is about organizations, and uh, we have to understand organizations no matter how they are construed. Uh, that's our task as, uh, as a field. A fourth one was coming from the practitioners. Well, PA, that's what we do. And then you, about theories, we don't need them, was the, the, the hard interpretation of some of them said. Uh, we are professionals, as whenever we got uh, educated at the universities, this was a natural scientist, and uh, he could do that without uh, theories because uh, he learned the ropes on the job. 
Uh, Action Public came in um, from other, other participants, and the, it goes very well to what is happening on the high modernity that PA is more and more involved in creating society. And that's where then uh, the citizens come in and become part of public administration in fulfilling whatever uh, task they are. Increasingly, you see in a number of Western countries that people get involved in uh, implementing various forms of policies on board of directors as grant holders for certain activities and so on and so forth. And uh, the French uh, concept of action public is taking that development into account. And finally, you can say that uh, if you go through universities, as we discussed yesterday in Turing, you have a lot of different schools over Europe, uh, but mainly you could talk about law-based uh, public administration, and you could talk about uh, the more Northwestern European and American idea about uh, organizational theory as uh, the root, and the links uh, between politics and administration as a core element. But you could, between those, you can find various schools, and uh, really over Europe, that's quite, if you take it as such, that would be quite some confusion. Not in each country, but uh, if you look upon it as I do from the U other side of the pond, from the US, that's quite some confusion about what are they about, what are they doing. So that's no easy way of defining PA. If you go then to, into the relations to partitioners, you could say that. Um, uh, many have changed from being those regulators around the start of the last century and being changed again. It is happening, it's uh, being done, but then also the role has changed from being, being very privileged uh, actors to being those who have to create solutions at the, on the spot with the resources available and to act as you see fit in a particular situation. So uh, it is no more just the roles of writing rules, writing laws, and uh, having that uh, overview of society. Now it's getting enhanced clarity in changing society. And this uh, then makes us being uh, elements of a process rather than controllers of the process. So you have more and more that uh, you do what the Americans call co-production or services, and you have to understand and use local knowledge. But local knowledge, local knowledge is something that people have locally, and that's why you need increasingly to involve them. So practitioners' roles are changing into uh, co-production. And that's where you always will be on some time constraint. Time again, uh, the practitioners reminded the theorists about the theorists are okay, but uh, we have to make do. And uh, we don't have time to think all the time. We don't have time to sit back and construe uh, new ways of action. We do it. And uh, we're forced to do it because of the scarce resources and uh, there's a high demand for our actions. So this time constraint is very important. For us, the idea of publication doesn't only mean you, you, you said, does it mean something else than concentration? So yes, it means something else than concentration because um, studying uh, the notion of publication means both studying the process, so the concentration, the interactions between different kinds of uh, stakeholders, but also how uh, through this process you have a change in the institution. So you can separate this notion of uh, process and this notion of changing the institution. Complexity is high and theory is simple. So uh, it's very typical that um, if you want to understand what's happening out there, you have to be interdisciplinary. You have to go across disciplines and use the various disciplines' knowledge uh, into and combine them into an integrated understanding. And that's where because theories are pretty poor, because most, poor are, most uh, theories are based uh, on disciplines, on one discipline. So you have a problem, uh, and um, as, as a theorist, we have to approach better understanding of working across disciplines, using our colleagues, but also learning from our colleagues and integrating some of their thinking into our own. 
one of the ways uh, this is done, that's with, with a sort of so-called triple helix, uh, that's uh, links between society, industry, and government, and universities. And uh, if you operate within that kind of understanding where you meet for creating solutions, uh, then, of course, you have to start thinking about what is the driving force. So it's the same as with interdisciplinarity. There's no pivot stance here. Um, everybody has to participate in the process, and nobody can take uh, <coughs> the blame just alone, and nobody can take credit for just alone what's happening. It is an intermingled system. And finally, we discussed uh, how to train for this. Uh, uh, but because that's the role of universities. And increasingly we see that universities get involved not only by training students proper, the young guys and girls, but also by having people uh, postgraduate into universities. And then the discussion came up. So, uh, do the universities have a privilege here still by taking people into class and teaching them? Or should it be more based on what's happening out there? And then where is the place for doing that kind of education? Should educators leave universities more and be more on the spot with those people who operate out there and then also learn from the processes they can watch on the spot as they evolve? So uh, maybe there are some chances here in thinking otherwise about how to do this post graduate training. <coughs> If we go to the tradition of teaching, how do we educate for PA? Well, um, we had a presentation by Tim John uh, that uh, took us into what happened after the universities have been opened. Um, if you could say that we have been a cloister, a church, or whatever, having our own uh, ceremonies, uh, our own understanding of the, the world, well, uh, those close comments have been opened. So we are subject to evaluations, we're subject to criticism, we're subject to whatever happens in that world outside, and we have to respond. And we have to understand that we are no longer in command the way we maybe were so many years ago. So this is an element uh, of it, the denationalization. It's a global world. And students can go freely anywhere to take part of their education because that's what the, the demand. And we get students in from other parts of the world. So again, we are being challenged and they have to step down from the privileged positions. Uh, students also demand more and more um, tailor-made, suited uh, education for specific purposes. It's by students, it's also by the future employers that demand that we understand their particular situation and uh, uh, adapt our teaching so that uh, it is possible, if not for students to go to a tailor-made course, but then to combine different elements into something that would suit their purposes. So we are not to define the combination, we are to define a number of possibilities and the students and the employers define what combination do we think would be the right one. And thirdly, up again comes the interdisciplinarity that uh, if we are researchers within a discipline, we cannot just teach that discipline anymore. We have to understand uh, more than our original trade to satisfy the demands of the open agendas. Then came up the theme of socialization. So yes, it is an open agenda, but still, um, for most students, they are, and it's a world of learning, it's a world of getting socialized, and it is a world of getting identity. So uh, universities still have that role, but uh, it is not professors that uh, are alone in creating what kind of uh, identity will come out here. And why not? Well, students have the exit options. If they're not satisfied with what they see, what they learn, what they feel, they can go to another one. And uh, depending on the demographic situation in that particular area, there could be a higher or lesser demand on universities, which then have to, of course, to operate on that kind of market. And the question came up, uh, so since these students are 
shopping class all the time. What is the consequence? Should we adapt so we uh, uh, acknowledge the fact that the, the consumer was doing no best? Is that what we have to live with, live by? That's a chance indeed for many of the senior people at the university. They go less than the other ones. Um, so the final question came up uh, around universities. Uh, do we really want to participate in that role of uh, PA, of being an active partner in society? Well, you could fight it at Harvard versus Humboldt. Humboldt is a traditional university that knows best. Uh, Harvard is kind of opening up, but in a way that is very specific for Harvard. So Harvard still is in the driver's seat, defining how solutions should be made. Increasingly, we see uh, that uh, the demands are more that the uh, universities should adapt to the needs of there. And that's neither the Harvard nor the Humboldt model that could survive in that context. So that would be a number, there are a number of challenges from the last year. What about theories? Are they used? Hmm. First of all, you could ask yourself, what is it talking of theory? Lots of PA teaching that's uh, about what's happening out there. So uh, how do we do research? Is it science in the traditional sense? Is it craft? Is it art? That's a highly uh, contested uh, issue. <clears throat> so if we go into what has happened, what did we do? You could say that we have pretty weak results in system problem solving uh, and greater success in metaphors. So we can talk about uh, the issue, we can talk about the elephant, but we don't drag the elephant anywhere. We talk about how we should be able, maybe at some point in the future, to drag or push or whatever due to this elephant. <coughs> so uh, many organizational theories are examples of the metaphors that have developed. And uh, but the final good of the Mara remains a little bit in the end. That may be due to bad communication. That's a theme that has come up time and again. How do we communicate? And we is not just, just, just researchers, but uh, it's a communication process. So how could we improve the process um, of communicating research uh, results? That's a very tricky issue and we have no uh, final solution to this, but a lot of uh, issues came up here. You can also say that PA theory often is just a follow-up practice. So what we do, the kind of research we do, is we observe what's going on and uh, become lumping behind, so to say. We are not on the forefront, but we are uh, behind looking at, oh, what happened? It's very interesting, and then we conceptualize this. And in the meantime, of course, the train has moved on. So maybe theories are just laggards. Uh, the common trends within this, uh, well, you can say that governance um, is one field really coming up. Um, uh, the, the discussion about not ruling, but being adaptive is a, another theme. And uh, strategies that are not strategies from the top, but strategies being developed as the process goes on, as a third element of uh, uh, the governance discussion. Co-production, as I mentioned earlier, is another theme that's uh, quite important in understanding what's going on uh, in society. So if the results were, in that perspective, not uh, very good, uh, the question is, so should we look at the other time? And uh, one example of this is discussing uh, interactive research. Moving from mode one to mode two was a theme that came up. And uh, what does it mean? Well, mode one, uh, you could say, had at least those three elements. Per, and it's uh, based on the natural sciences and the way they are. So uh, it's disciplinary. It has a very well-defined paradigm. And in short, it's uh, based on the interest of the academics. Secondly, it's hierarchical. It uses covering laws. Um, that's what we strive for to understand what, under what law is this phenomenon acting. And that is timeless. It's generalizing across time and space. 
And uh, finally, it's principle that uh, it's the analysis uh, that should be correct. Uh, it's not the world as such, but it's the way we conceptualize, the way we link with the world, that's uh, the, the test for uh, the research. Well, if you take more tool then, uh, what you could say about for is it is applied and it is contextual. It goes across a discipline and uh, is very heterogeneous. So uh, those who operate under the, the system of disciplines will have great problems in understanding and um, taking lessons from uh, this kind of applied research. And I know the phrase applied research in many people's world, of course, meaning that it's done with it. It's not high theory, it's uh, very practical, and it's not of too much interest for many academics. Secondly, it's interactive. It's non hierarchical, uh, nobody has the final say, and uh, uh, it has a action repertoire rather than uh, covering laws. So it's ways of approaching, ways of understanding, but without having <coughs> the overall capacity to define how we should understand this phenomenon. And finally, it's then what you would call reflexive and pragmatic. Um, it is um, taking some kind of social responsibility, that's the pragmatic pragmatism element of it, that researchers do want to be part of what's happening. They do want to also take responsibility of what is happening because they are in an interaction process about what is happening. So it's again the chicken and egg, the chicken and egg uh, understanding that uh, there's no privileged position for any of the participants. But everybody has a role during the process, but it is a process that is difficult to stop. Well, so much about book one and book two. What you have then is uh, a context contextualization, increasingly contextualization of our research. Uh, and there are numbers of uh, catchwords here we see in, in the literature and in the discussion. One is the phonetic, that, uh, that's coming from Aristotle's, of course, but it's been, uh, it's been marketed by uh, a Dane called Ben Flugia. And uh, the main idea is, is that you see uh, research as a craft. So the skilled handyman can do this research. And how he's doing it, he doesn't really know. He does it because he does done it so many times that it's become part of his body and mind. So that kind of understanding is one way of contextualizing. Another well known in research that's grounded theory that uh, you take what you see and you speculate about it and uh, if not generalizing, then you draw at least some links to the Western world. And you discuss with the frames, so we are determined what we can say and understand by the particular frame we are oriented towards, whether it's a disciplinary uh, frame, whether it's uh, the frame of the particular field we are operating within, so it could be some kind of social theory, it could be theories about uh, urban development and so on. We do operate within frames, and um, <clears throat> that's one way of contextualizing what we're doing. Uh, in Canada, very often in, in public administration, we need solutions quick and they're not there. Um, this need, or what it means in terms of administrative action and preparing of policy solutions, I think is not being taken into account by science at all. You know, this aspect of time a lack of time, time shortage, and what it means in terms of action and actually good solution. Then, of course, came up the question, so uh, who's got the power? If, if you have stakeholders, if you have uh, theorists, um, who is going to determine what interests are to be followed? There's no answer to this, but it's a question that comes up time again. If, in the kind of discussion of uh, O2 uh, research that, so, are we just serving somebody out there? And the answer is no, but who is serving who? Since this is a chicken and egg question, it's difficult to answer. 
panel we had a discussion about um, the partitioners in this kind of process. And uh, the demand tell us that uh, we need more reflexive partitioners. What we see now is all demanding partitioners, but since they have to be part of the process, uh, we need uh, also new ways of being a practitioner. And we talked about people of the interface between the practice and theory, and we talked about hybrid kind of uh, uh, practitioners, people going back and forth between academia and uh, practice. And uh, that, that uh, hybrid kind of practitioner, several people express an interest in that's the way to go. And uh, we talked then finally about uh, mode two as frame, uh, as mode one as frame for mode two, that we do operate in, in both uh, spheres. So uh, the more banal view is our mode one, those covering laws, those principal ways of understanding what's happening in a group, principal ways of understanding what politics is about. So yes, we can do some theorizing on that uh, level, but then we have to go on to the more particular understandings, and that's the flow of mode two. So, what are the challenges for PA? Well, the roots of uh, PA are, as I have explained, uh, modernism and mode one. And with research, we have generalized theory. With teasing, we have organizations working in and under order. That's the way we conceptualize much of the places, many of the places people are going to. And uh, in practice, uh, well, the modernism ideal is to develop and control the good society. So in a way we have here to the left, that is the good old modernity, that's why society operates, that's why the thinking is done at the top, creating solutions uh, for the bottom. But uh, increasingly the society is somewhat different there. So uh, in research we have contextualized the lesson to learn much more, so less grand theory, more uh, contextualized theory. In teaching, uh, we have to learn people how to situate themselves for action. So instead of being put into a power position, they be put increasingly into a negotiated position out there. And uh, in practice, uh, what we have to learn that is how to differentiate uh, solutions instead of having the one and for all solution we want to apply to anybody. So these are very briefly uh, said the challenges uh, that the public administration at the university faces. That's some of the things we have to understand and work on. And even in that role, well, what can we do? Not much. We can help uh, in the, the future program uh, to go into more of the discussions of these new interfaces, these hybrids, these dual functions, exit options, and so on. This way of having a much more, in the old sense, much more loose uh, understanding of the world, but a number of roles that could be identified and could be worthwhile discussing, uh, could be uh, could we understand them better, is that something to develop in uh, conjunction with practice. But there's a chance, and uh, because the institutions are separated, so the universities, the universities in the Western world, and uh, members of the training need. Well, we hope that, uh, among others, even can be an institution for a better uh, integrating uh, those institutions. So we want to interlink public administration at the universities and public administration uh, practice, and uh, that's several elements of PA, of course, uh, uh, of uh, even, sorry. And uh, we want to uh, chance uh, the discussion who is going to set the standards for what's happening at the university and what's happening out there. Because there is a tendency to go back <coughs> almost to the hierarchy and separation. We want uh, new understandings here. And uh, we need probably better communication, so that we could call, could call uh, new dissemination theories. That's the way we work with the theories. We want to better understand. Uh, how to uh, communicate with one another. And uh, in that process, we also have to understand that there are new target groups out there, new groups which are on the border between small PA and the rest of the world, new citizens getting involved, and uh, they are increasingly becoming a target uh, group for us. And uh, secondly, one could discuss much more about internships. Would they be 
a practical way of, of getting better integration. And by the integration, doing the communication between theory and practice.